Todd Browning was an actor, writer, and director best known for directing the 1931 version of Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi. Born Charles Albert Browning Jr. on July 12, 1880 in Louisville, Kentucky, Todd was the third child of Charles and Lydia Browning. However, the Browning's daughter died as an infant, leaving them with Todd and his brother George. The family also took in a niece who was raised with Charles and George. Todd, as he was known, although why he took that nickname isn't clear, took an early interest in theatrical storytelling. At the age of seven, he would put on productions in his family home. The productions were so popular that he began charging a penny for admission and received a write-up in the local paper. He attended high school with his siblings. However, he did not finish school, running away from home around the age of 16 to join the circus. His reason for leaving home at such a young age has never been fully explained, as his family was reasonably well off and was reported to have had a decent childhood. Some assume it was because of a girl. He worked a variety of jobs at the circus, performing as a clown, contortionist, and barker to name just a few. He created an act called the Living Hypnotic Corpse, in which he would bury himself for multiple days with slits for air and the audience to view. After leaving the circus, he worked vaudeville often performing in blackface, which was socially accepted at the time. In 1905, he met Amy Louise Stevens, who he married one year later in 1906. They lived with her parents. During this time, he worked at a local amusement park and possibly did some work for a railroad. By all accounts, his marriage to Amy was not a happy marriage. Todd left her in 1909 and she filed for divorce, which was completed in 1910. At this point, he went back on the road performing in variety shows and vaudeville. In 1913, the Biograph Company hired him as an actor, where he performed in various movies, including films by D.W. Griffith. He then moved to California and in 1914 appeared in the short film Nell's Eugenic Wedding, a comedy which involved doing things like eating soap and vomiting, basically a 1900s era jackass. He also appeared in 17 episodes of Bill the Office Boy, a series produced by the Mutual Film Company. During his time as an actor, he met an actress by the name of Alice Wilson, also known as Alice Watson, also known as Alice Ray. Alice was using the name Wilson, that of her ex-husband, Douglas Wilson. Browning began directing in 1915, starting with a short film called The Lucky Transfer. The film followed a poor workman who gets wrapped up with a couple of thieves. Like many of his other films, this does not survive to this day. As his career was on the rise, unfortunately, Todd developed a drinking problem. On June 16, 1915, after work one day, Todd had a few drinks with a few colleagues. They drank late into the night. Then, Browning got behind the wheel of his car and drove into a train at a crossing. Three other people were with him. One of those was actor Elmer Booth. Elmer was killed in the collision. Browning broke his leg and had various internal injuries, sending him to the hospital. Somehow, the situation was recorded as an accident without any reference to his drinking as the cause instead blaming the fog of the night. While recovering from the accident, Browning started writing screenplays. He then co-directed along with Wilfred Lucas his first feature film called Jim Bludso. Also in 1917, he signed a five-picture contract with Metro Pictures, moved to New York, and he married Alice. A very busy year. 1918 was the year Todd Browning signed a contract with Universal Studios, making nine films with them, including the Wicked Darling, which is the first time he worked with Lon Chaney, something he would do many times during his career. His first major hit film was The Virgin of Stambul. The film is considered offensive by modern standards, full of racial stereotypes, and to be honest, it was offensive by some standards of the day. The film stars Priscilla Dean as a Turkish woman who falls in love with an American soldier. Thanks to the success of the film and others, he became known as a reliable and profitable director, averaging an output of around two films per year. Another film of his was 1922's Under Two Flags. 
It was plagued with a lot of problems, such as a sandstorm that buried the equipment at the location, and then a fire on the Universal lot destroyed some of the film negative. Priscilla Dean was burnt when trying to save the film stock. This delayed the film's release. However, the film did turn out to be a financial success when it was released. He was then tapped to direct The Hunchback of Notre Dame with Lon Chaney. However, due to his continued alcohol abuse, he was removed from the project. Besides his drinking creating problems, he had an affair with Anna Mae Wong, who was famous for being the first leading Chinese-American movie star in Hollywood. She was underage at the time. And in the 1920s, the interracial differences were also considered inappropriate. Due to his behavior, he was laid off from Universal, and his wife left him. Browning was not out of work for long, signing a new contract with MGM in 1925. The Unholy Three was his turnaround film, about sideshow performers turning to a life of crime. The movie did well, and was well-reviewed. MGM optioned him for additional films. This was a productive time for Browning, working with Lon Chaney, making films such as The Blackbird, The Road to Mandalay, and London After Midnight. The film London After Midnight was destroyed in a fire. Only a few stills of the film survive. Browning eventually acknowledged his alcohol problem, solving it by cutting hard spirits out of his life. He would still occasionally drink wine or beer. He began to rekindle his relationship with his wife as well. Browning continued to take from his experiences working in the circus, making The Unknown. The film also starred Lon Chaney and Joan Crawford. The film is considered groundbreaking. However, at the time, it was panned by critics. He did occasionally do films that were not supernatural, such as a gangster film, The Big City, with Chaney, of course. No copies survive, of course. His last film with Chaney was Where East is East, in which Chaney plays an animal trapper in Indochina. His first non-silent film was The Thirteenth Chair in 1929. He wanted Chaney to play a detective in the film, but Chaney wasn't comfortable speaking on camera yet, so the role went to Bella Lugosi. They also did a silent version of the film for theaters that were not yet set up for sound. His partnership with Lugosi continued into 1931, the year he made his most famous film, Dracula. The film was not well reviewed by critics at the time, however, to the public, it was a hit. The film was a financial success for Universal, as audiences would watch it multiple times. Back at MGM, he did Freaks. The film was unlike any film at the time. The movie was extremely violent for the era. He hired actual sideshow performers, including conjoined twins, a bearded lady, and little people. Browning did try to create a positive environment for the sideshow performers, but was reported as being difficult with the rest of the crew. Louis B. Mayer hated the film and only released it to a few screens. He also had the film edited to a much shorter version than Browning's. Audiences did not respond well to the film. Interestingly, people complained about his use of actual sideshow performers as being heartless and exploitive. Even though it could be argued that Browning was giving sideshow performers an opportunity in film that other filmmakers were not providing. The movie was banned in many areas in the US and it was banned in the UK for 30 years. In 1933, he did Fast Workers. This was the most expensive film of his career and also a huge financial failure. After Fast Workers, his relationship with the studios continued to deteriorate. With Mark of the Vampire, Browning attempted to draw upon his earlier success, London After Midnight and Dracula. The film involved mysticism and vampires and used many similar shots to the previous films. It was well reviewed and did make the studio some money. The movie featured Bella Lugosi and Carol Borland. Borland departed from the way female vampires were portrayed at the time. Her character, Luna, had long, straight, dark hair, a prototype of what we now call goth. Think early Morticia Adams. The Devil Doll originally had a script that used a voodoo theme of shrinking down people into dolls. However, censors and the Film Code Association were not happy about the voodoo aspect of the film. So the movie was reworked to have people being shrunk without that magical element using science to shrink people as dolls to enact revenge. 
the film is known for its fantastic special effects for the time in how they made it look once people and animals were down in size. His final film was 1939's Miracles for Sale, following a magician solving crimes. Magicians were angered by this film because it gave away many of their trade secrets. Many parts of the film were edited out at the request of the magicians. The film was also banned in some countries due to its violence. Studios no longer wanted to work with Browning, so he retired after miracles for sale, moving to Malibu, California. His wife died in May of 1944. A trade paper at the time mistakenly published his death instead of hers. He became a recluse and was suspicious of anyone attempting to help or befriend him. He put all his attention into his dog. Eventually, he did reconnect with his brother until his brother's death in 1958. He actually attended the funeral of his brother, unlike his parents, whose funerals he did not attend. He didn't discuss his film career and simply lived with his animals towards the end of his life. He eventually moved into the house of his dog's veterinarian and the vet's wife. He was diagnosed with laryngeal cancer and was unable to speak. Then, after a stroke, he grew worse, dying in 1962 at the age of 82. He left half of his state to the Snows, his veterinarian and the vet's wife. The rest was doled out to various people, including some hospitals. Nothing was given to his family. He stipulated that no funeral would be held for him and was buried in the same cemetery where Alice's ashes were interred. Many of his surviving films are now considered classics, such as Dracula and Freaks.